Amen. Uh, welcome, people of God. We thank God for bringing us again for the fifth podcast. May God's name be praised. Let's pray, Father. I thank you, Lord, for bringing me for this podcast. I return all glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because God has answered prayers. That Lord has answered by fire. You are my God. That Lord has answered by fire. You are my God. Lord, I really thank you for the grace, for the strength, for the spirit of God that has been coming upon me in this podcast, despite not having strength, despite distraction, despite uh, on the normal, or maybe before I was not having all the strength, but today I just saw that you gave the strength, Father Lord, I'm so grateful. Thank you, Jesus, for the power of God that has been taking charge, that has been leading me and helping me. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the word of God that has been coming out. In fact, I'm even asking myself, where is all this word coming from? Anytime I look at the next topic, I'll be like, God, what will I see now? But the minute I start, I will just see that the word of God is flowing. Father Lord, I'm so grateful for this. Please be magnified in the highest in Jesus' name. Father Lord, we are here again for another topic. Father, please come and take all the glory. King of glory, please fill me up with your spirit. Father, please take control. Do what only you can do. Have your way. Father, Lord, don't let this word of God stand against us. Please, Lord, don't let my testimony be destroyed. Almighty Father, please help us to do your will. Please let the word of God go into people's hearts and do what you are asking it to do. Oh, Lord, let people open their hearts for you and say, Lord, I surrender to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for answer prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You know, when I saw this topic, <laughs> I said it in that prayer, opening prayer. I said, each topic, I would just be like, God, what am I going to say now? So this topic, we have really talked about it yesterday. Imagine, it was something that we talked about yesterday and then we want to talk about today. But well, that's the word of God. It's just like saying in Jesus' name yesterday. Are we not going to say in Jesus' name again today? We will say it now. You understand? Because there's power in it. The work he did for us yesterday, we still do another more today. We are also redeeming each day because each day are full of evil. You understand? Each day is full of evil. So the evil of yesterday is enough for yesterday. So another one is in today. So we have to redeem it again. So the word of God for yesterday, the Lord has used it for yesterday. So again today, God wants to use this one again. So it will come in another dimension. And I have prayed that the Lord should take charge. She teach me how to say it so that it doesn't become tautology. You know, I'm sure some people will listen to that one and then listen to this one immediately. So it's not be like, ah, why are you saying the same thing now? So that it will become fresh in people's eyes. I know that God will do it because it's the word of God. God will teach us how to say it. So the title is, He that is born of God. If you remember our topic of yesterday, the saints are no longer have dominion over you. We talked about that passage. So today God really wants to use that passage for us. We want to really, really talk about that passage. It is in First John chapter chapter 3. But today, unlike yesterday that we didn't read everything, we will read the whole chapter. Then we will now start discussing. So let's start from verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Behold, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that it was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. 
For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that he heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. Hmm. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Ye, we know that we have passed from death unto life. Okay, this one is not even part of it, but let's read it. Because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he lays down his life for us. And we also lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this was good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, let neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, as He gave us commandments. And he that keepeth His commandments, dwelleth in Him, and He in Him, and thereby we know that He abideth in us, by the Spirit which He had given us. Amen. So, may God put His words in my mouth, <laughs> because I don't even know how to go about it right now. Because it's looking like God, is it not the same thing I said yesterday that I'm going to be saying again? But I know that God will take control. So let's let's be picking it one by one. He that is born of God, he that is born of God, what is, does it mean? He that is born of God. You remember that passage, that popular passage, very, very still to you. Except the man is born of God. I did the day say it. Except the man is born again. That is verse 3 of chapter, John chapter 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, what does it mean, born of God? Because now people will be confused like, are you a, are you a Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian. Are you a born again Christian? Yes, I'm born again. So what does it mean to be born of God? Because when Jesus Christ said, "He that cannot born again, we don't see Jesus." Have you? Am I misquoting it? Remember, I say unto you, "Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God." Okay, that's the real thing. So Jesus was saying, "Except the man is born again," and that born again is not, you know, that Nicodemus even asked in that chapter three. He said. Does it mean as I am grown up like this, I will now go inside my mother again the second time? He said, no, that is not what it means. It means that the bond that you were born before, that is physical. Now, you will be born by the... Hey, don't let me misquote this thing. No. You will be born by the Spirit of God. I'll be able to they put it into God's... God's uh, um, uh, be born of water and of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So, what does it now mean? He that is born of God. It means that when you are born of God, that means that is the real meaning of born again. Then we also have this passage, this chapter 3 of First John, that is talking about he that is born of God. He said he cannot sin. You remember, we discussed this so much yesterday, so we are discussing it again. So if it's looking like uh, we are saying the same thing, that is how the word of God should be. It should always be the same thing. Even if we are saying it in another dimension, it should be the same thing. If they say love your wife today, tomorrow it should still be love your wife. There should not be, you can love your wife, but <laughs> you understand. It should still be the same thing. So if I'm telling you that uh, he that is born of God, 
that is the real born again. So we, today we want to check ourselves. On this podcast, we want the world of God to check us. Are we really born again or is it just born with a wudu? Or is it just born by mouth? Or is it just, if you want to give your life to Christ, you come forward now. Then you raise up your hand. But it's not talking, it's not touching your heart. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe those things are really working for salvation. I don't know. But what I feel is that just raising up hand alone is not real salvation. You understand? Just saying after me alone is not salvation. It has to come from real repentance. You understand? Uh, even Peter, even Paul, when they were put in prison, he and Silas were singing. And that um, man, that centurion, have you, what do they call himself? The warder of that uh, prison. He said, ah, what shall I do to be saved? He said, repent, ye and your household, and ye shall be saved. You understand? So that is the real repentance. Paul did not see that day. Um, repeat after me. You understand? Because this repeat after me, you know, there's a particular church. Whenever they say repeat after me, they just say it very fast. I now say, if you have said that, and then you understand, I will now be like, ah, God have mercy. Which kind of salvation is this one? These people have not even... You know, before, before, in just one second, you just say, now you are, repeat after me. Ah, ah, I will like, it is well, no? This repeat after me type of salvation. Ah, it is well, no? It is well, no? You understand? So you must really, really be real born again. It's not about, uh, I went out for the altar call. When you went out for the altar call, was your heart really, really ready to serve this God for the rest of your life? You understand? It's just like when the, when you are, at the altar, that you want to get married to somebody, which a lot of people, they are not really, really um, so much, um, what is it called, so much like uh, sure of, of their decisions nowadays. Many people nowadays, they will just say it by mouth, but they are not ready to do everything that, that they are promising that, uh, at that marriage Please, you understand? It's just when you are at the other time, you are saying, do you take this woman for life? In sickness, in health, uh, to death, do you pass? You know, some people just say, yes, I do. And then after that, you go and see them sleeping with another woman, sleeping with another man, you know? They didn't take that decision serious. So it's just the same thing. By the time you are being born again, are you just going out there to just say this thing after what your pastor is just saying or your heart really, really decides? You understand? Uh, and I stayed on my knees, stayed on my knees. Uh, ah, there's this song I'm trying to remember. I made a covenant. I'm a, I've had a covenant, a covenant with my God. Like he's trying to say that um, I made a covenant that I will not sin again. You understand? Maybe after this podcast, I'll look for that song. <laughs> you understand? But really, it's, it's, it's ringing in my brain, but it's not coming. The words are not coming, but I made a covenant. I made a covenant. The song is I made a covenant. You understand? But I don't know how the <laughs> how the lyrics go anymore. You understand? But he's just trying to say that I made a covenant that I will not go back to sin again. So those are the things that happens when you are really born again, when you are really saved. It's not just about uh, I just I, I said what the pastor said. You can say what the pastor said and you are, <laughs> you are not really saved. Okay, let's take for example, you, you, a child committed sin now, you understand, and then ran away from home. I went to his father's friend, and the father's friend came over and said, hey, you see after me, you understand, I, you mention your name, I, the, the father, the friend of the father said it again. I will not do what I did before. He said, okay, now you are, you are, then the father's friend said, now you are forgiven. Say the father's friend is the God. Is he the father? Then number two, that boy can say that thing, and it's not even coming from real repentance. It's not even coming from his heart. It might just be coming from his mouth. 
But what am I saying? I'm not saying that God doesn't put uh, people that that are already saved before to help you. Even Paul he helped that uh, warder, that man that was the guard at the prison. He helped him. He taught him how to pray. You understand? But then it came from true repentance. It came from Lord. I made a covenant. I will not go back to this sin again. You understand? That was how me. I got my own salvation. I had to say, God, I will not do it again. I promise you, I will serve you for the rest of my life. You understand? Ah, I really wish I could remember the song. I made a. I have. I have made a covenant. I made a covenant with my God. That I will not sin again. That I will serve you for the rest of my life. You know, those are the covenants that happens at salvation. As real born again. That was what Jesus was talking about. That is how to be really, really born again. You know? Because nowadays, you know, we have discussed how to overcome temptation. I said it's by you being really saved. <laughs> I thank God that God has taken charge of this podcast. Because when I started, I was like, what will I say? So God has finally taken over. So, it's, it's about you really, really being saved. That is the first step of, of, um, of overcoming temptation, Abby. Yes, that's what I was saying. Real saved. And then now, we are talking about he that is born of God. What does it mean when you are really, really born of God? It means you are really, really saved. You are really, really saved. You are not half saved. You are not saved by mouth. You are not. It's not your pastor that declared you that you are now saved, because some pastors, after they have asked you to repeat after them, they now say now you are already saved. You see, look at the, look at the explanation I I mentioned just now. There's the explanation I just did just now. That's um, father's friend now say now you are forgiven. Is the father's friend the friend? Is the father's friend the 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 father? It is God himself. He said the spirit of the Lord confirms with our spirit that we are the children of God. In my own case, it was the spirit of God that confirmed in my spirit that I am now a child of God. It was not somebody that was beside me that came and told me that you are now saved. Because if that was it, and I go back to sin, you understand. But at that time, you will really, really confess your sin. Now imagine in the case of the prodigal son. Nobody followed him to his father. He really, really repented. And he meant it. He said, Father, I am sorry. I have sinned against you. That is how to be saved. You will really, really confess this sin. You will really say, Father, I am sorry. Those things I used to do. Maybe you are a womanizer and you have heard the word of God. Maybe from this our podcast or anywhere else. That don't be a womanizer. You are destroying yourself. It's sinful against God. You say, God, I will not do it again. Those girls, please just give me the power to go and see no more. The power to see them are, and I will not have interest to sleep with them again. The power that I want to do your will alone. Give it to me. Because this power will actually come upon you. When you are truly, truly repenting. Or did you, don't you notice that after that, that uh, prodigal son came back to his father. He didn't go back again to that sin. That is the power of go and see no more. When you truly, truly repent, the power will just be upon you. He that is born of God, you cannot sin. So today we are learning how do you really, really get that true, true salvation. So it's by that true repentance, first of all. How do you get truly born of God? You say he that is born of God does not commit sin. How do you really, really do that sin? You understand? That's truly born again. So that's what we are learning in this podcast today by the grace of God. So it is by you truly repenting. I made a covenant with my God. I made a covenant with my God. That I am redeemed. I made a covenant with my God. <laughs> Do you know the song that I'm, I'm, that is clashing with this song in my head now? Is, then I stayed on my knees, stayed on my knees. Then Jesus took my body, my body away. Oh, Satan tried to tell me that the Bible was a lie, that Jesus did not love me and I was going to die. But I stayed on my knees, stayed on my knees. And Jesus took my body, my body away. So that was the song that was 
clashing, but this I made a comment and too, it's also supposed to come. It's one of it's one of the songs of salvation. I love that song too. So this one too that I just sang, you can see the lyrics. It's saying that I stayed on my knees. You think you want to you want to leave the side of the devil and come to God and then the devil will be looking at you. Yeah, they go. I free you just like that. It will you will have a lot of fighting in your heart. A lot of are you still going to do this? A lot of um, what about your friends? Let's say that somebody that did rituals now and then you go on your knees to say, God, I want to repent of my sins. You don't know that something will prick in your heart. You say that means you will be poor. But then, by the time you look at the peace of mind that will come, you look at the times that God will always take care of you. You look at the time that that you will no longer be depressed. Then you say, Lord, I I surrender. I made a covenant. I will I will serve you alone. Then you mean it. It's not like people that go on the altar with their life partner, with their marriage partner. Now, nah, then, then they promise I will not sleep with another woman. But after the marriage, they go and be sleeping. Your own will not be like that. You will really, really say, God, I am promising. It can even bring tears out of your eyes. I'm telling you, real salvation. Most of the time, it it makes you to cry for how much you have done against God. I'm not saying compulsory you must cry because. Some people used to call apostolic faith and uh, uh, the child that cries. But most of the time, it's not nobody is beating anybody. It's not that everybody, you know, that they say, yeah, start to cry. No. <laughs> By the time you look at yourself, you look at as how much, it's nobody is beating you. It's just being emotional, like, God, I am sorry, I've done this much against you. Please forgive me. Look at yesterday when I was doing one of the postcards. I started crying when I remembered uh, the grace of God that helped me through those situations. You understand? I said through it all. You know, I started crying at the time. So who was beating me that time? So it's the same thing. By the time you say, God, I am sorry. I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to go back to this thing again. And you really mean it. And you you are sorry for your sins. You are sorry for the ways you have. You have you have made God angry. You understand? You hear the word of God, and then you say, "God, I I, I just I, I really wish and I pray that through this my podcast, people will be giving their lives to God wholeheartedly." You say, "God, I I give it all to you. God, I I want to change to your ways. I I'm I'm not going to live that life again. Even even ritualists, I want God to be using this message to speak to people, to make people to repent and say, God." I don't. I I would rather go poor. And there is power in salvation. You will just see that the power to go and sin no more will just come upon you. Look at Nicodemus. Though he was a a private, uh, or how do I call it, a secret disciple, because of his uh, post in the tabernacle. Abi, is it tabernacle they call it or temple? You understand? Because of his post, he was a secret disciple. But then when Jesus Christ uh, died, he was one of the people that went and buried him. You understand? That is to tell you that the power of salvation will make you to do the right things. When you are supposed to do the right things, you understand? When everybody was running from Jesus, he came out to to, to be one of the people that, that buried Jesus. That is what salvation does. You just you cannot even do the wrong things again. The power to do wrong things will just live your life like that. The power to do right will just come upon you straight. So that is first of all how to overcome temptation that we did yesterday um, in one of the podcasts that we have done uh, today. You understand? It will just come upon you. You just find yourself overcoming sin. Like let me say the testimonies of some of the. Uh, men of God <clears throat> that that have listened, that have read in uh, magazines in my childhood church. So the man said, before he used to be the type of man that used to like to party. He was a young man, but the day he went to church and he was truly saved. That's why I'm telling you that if your salvation will still allow you to go and drink alcohol. Then you have not been saved. If it will still allow you to you leave church, you still plan appointment with a girl to come and sleep in your house. 
my brother and my sister in the Lord. It means you are not saved. It means that you, you need to go back to the cross. Cross. It means you need to go and say, God, I am sorry. Don't let your life be like that of we are share. That he carry that um, fake salvation book till he got to heaven. He car he walk on that road till he got to heaven. And they said this is not the real salvation. No. You have missed it. So don't let your case be like that. He said, What shall I profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul in, in hell? You understand? So don't be like that. Don't patch patch it. Don't say eh, some people are doing that kind of Christianity too. Don't do that kind of Christianity with them. You repent in your own way and come back to God and let God save you. You understand? If Jesus Christ save your soul like that and you repent quickly like that, and you have gone back to the rightful way. You understand? And by the time you're on the rightful way, sin will no longer have dominion over you. Since when you are passionate, that's when sin will still be having dominion over you. So I was trying to share the testimony of, maybe I will share like two, self of that man. He said that that night, after he got back, the zeal or the, what that thing that used, when his friends came in another day, say let them go party. He said he no longer have that seal again in his life. You understand? Another song is coming to my mind now. Today I went to the old place where I used to be. Uh, my friend said, uh, then I said, I'm not the man I used to be. When I look up there, I said, da, 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 da. Thanks to Calvary, I am not the man that I used to be. Thanks to Calvary, things are different than before. When I when they ask me, then I try to tell them, thanks to Calvary, I don't live there anymore. That is what salvation does. It changes you. You cannot just do it. It's not. It's not. I wanna be. Like some churches today, they will, you, they will shall tell you to be struggling with the sin, that one day the sin will leave you. It, it's not salvation. The salvation will make that sin to leave you immediately. The seal, I said that man, he used to, he used to go to parties. What if, maybe even in the last same day or maybe the following day, he just doesn't like to go again. And there are many testimonies like that. A man of God talked about his testimony. He said he used to be, a chain smoker, like Ficon Rocon, like by the time he finished this one, he's taking the next one, by the time he's taking the next one, then he went on his knees, prayed, Father, please save my soul, have mercy on me, and God confirmed in his heart that you are now saved, it's not his pastor that told him you are now saved, like the illustration I did, then by the time he got off from his knees, he could not smoke again, you understand? You cannot drink again if you have been the one that drink. If you have been the one that sleep with women. Look at Paul the Apostle now. He said it. He said the, the things he didn't want to do. Those are the things he were doing. But thanks to God, he could not do them again after salvation came. That Jesus Christ helped him. He couldn't do it again. So that is what salvation does. It will just help you. Those things that you have been struggling with. Maybe you are the type that you are saying, I'm trying to stop drinking. No? You understand? Today I drank one, tomorrow I will just drink one, I will not drink too much. You understand? By the time you are truly saved, you just see that you cannot do it anymore. You cannot even take that one. That one will not just come to you. The interest will not just come to you. You understand? That's it. Even if they make you to stay naked with a woman on the same bed, the seal, the spirit to want to sleep with her will not come inside your heart. You understand? I said, I me, mean, I've gone through experiences like that. So what was it that helped me at those times? It was salvation. It is salvation that helps me. It's not my own power. You understand? I've been in a situation that the man was, was, he's no man, like the young man was like really, really trying to force me. But I, my body was not, was not moving to his advances. You understand? So what was it that made my body to die at that time? That is salvation. That is what salvation does, does. If you are the man too and you are truly saved, your body will not move to all those kind of things. You, because the word of God is the one that that has taken over you. You understand? You just notice that he is not just coming to you. 
you just don't want to. You say they cannot sin. Let's read that page again. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For if he remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. It's not that I'm trying not to. He cannot. You can't. So we have talked so much. So we are leaving the rest for the Holy Spirit to, to do it. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this podcast. When I started, I was like, God, what am I going to say? But I, I later on, I see that the Holy Spirit took control. And then you helped us. You help us to discuss salvation. Father, Lord, thank you so much. Blessed be your name. Father, let the word of God has gone. And let it do what we are sending it out to do. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, come and have your way. Me to help me. Don't let my salvation be destroyed. Don't let my testimony be destroyed. Father, keep me on your side. Oh God, please be filled with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for our prayers. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.